and welcome to the foot of our stairs and today we're going to be having a quick look at Murren Butch Stansinger. This cartoon was first broadcast in 1982 on Channel 4 and is from the Bevanfield Film Studio with producer Mary Swindale at the helm, a very lovely woman I've had the pleasure of talking to briefly and Timothy Forder as the writer, director and narrator. It was repeated well into the 90s. Murren Butch Stansinger is one of those characters that lots of people remember, but they're not quite sure why. He's a sort of, well, torso with a face and arms and legs, I suppose, an onion-like creature, if you will, that lives in the crack under someone's sink. Murren is a very morose sort of character. You might even call him depressed. His existence is a very bland one in that he will spend most of his day overthinking some trivial thing or trying to find something that's not really all that important. In a lot of ways, Murren is all of us. His challenges are seemingly trifle to the observer, yet of absolute importance to him. Murren has friends, relations and neighbours in the show. He really, really likes his next door neighbour, but he's not really taken with her boyfriend Nigel. Murren's cousin Rossiter often features on the show as well. Rossiter is a creature similar to Murren. Murren's neighbour is essentially a very tiny human being. Most of the action takes place under the sink, but now and then the characters venture outside, and this is where their scale and size changes, so that they're normal sized when they're in the outside world, but they're tiny when they're under Murren's sink. It's not a superpower or anything like that, it's a quirk of the show, really. Nigel, for example, can visit Murren under the sink, but can also drive a full-sized car because he's a flash bastard. If I was to try and explain what Murren is about, I would probably say it's a study in depression, anxiety and antisocial tendencies. Murren is that part of us that just wants to be left alone, but on his own terms, if you know what I mean. He doesn't want to be involved in much or go anywhere particularly, but he'd like to be able to have a friend around now and then if he feels like it. He sort of wants things to happen, but doesn't really want anything to change either. In his own words, when one is presented with the choice between two tasks, do neither and avoid the possibility of making the wrong decision. It's not a depressing show. It's a show about a depressed character, and you will find yourself connecting with Murren in some way as you progress through the series. I had a chat with another fan of the show, Craig from 80snostalgia.com. Craig from 80snostalgia.com, welcome hey. to the foot of our stairs. How's it going? It's going well. It's bonfire night as we were speaking, so there might be a few flashes and bangs behind me, but it's not because not because of me. You're not, it's not in a rough area or not like that. It's just bonfire <laughs> night. It's not an average night around here, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it's an average night where I live, so I've got curtains shut and everything there. <laughs> so, as you know, I've had just a little look back at um, Murren Butch Stansinger, which is yes. uh, how, how it's correctly pronounced. I was saying Buck Stansinger and was immediately corrected when I watched it all back. Yeah, yeah. Butch Stansinger. My question to you, Craig, as a chap who's expressed interest in this same cartoon before... Yeah. What is he? What is Murren? Well, the thing is, I never questioned what he was because really? I grew up with the Mister Men, and they were just heads on legs. Of course, yeah, they were, weren't they? So there's no, you know, it's, it, it never occurred to me to question that he looked in any way weird. He just looked like another Mister Man. It was um, like a hench, one of and muscly, and he was a bit weird. Yes, he had quite a muscular arms for a head. <laughs> 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 and he, he had clogs as well, which is a bit of a strange one. But yeah, a head with... and a watch as well. He had on, didn't he? Yeah, I don't know what he was, but but it never occurred to me to think that he was anything other than a normal cartoon character or a normal a normal guy you see on TV. I guess so, and and I suppose it's only looking back on it when you ask that question, isn't it? It's like, what is he actually? Because at the time you're watching it, and it's just like. Fair dues, whatever this is, lives under a, in a crack in somebody's sink <laughs> for the start, you know. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I always thought, is he an onion or something like that? I was dying to ask the show's creators about it. Um, when I did eventually get in touch with them, I got totally sidetracked by a different conversation and okay. forgot to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I, 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 I dare ring her back now. <laughs> oh, of course not. My dad was an onion because he had he was the same shape 
and he had that sprig on that's top it that's what does it for me it's that laurel and hardy thing on top yeah yeah, yeah. definitely definitely but it changed size didn't it so it, it was one under the sink is this big but if he ever goes outside he's massive his normal size no this this bothered me quite a lot when i was <laughs> yeah. young because i tend to overthink things so <laughs> I, I reckon that he lived in an oversized house oh right so he's a normal size head or normal size yeah. person shaped like a head yeah. in an oversized house so when he goes outside he doesn't change size but he then blends in better with the surroundings. What an what an amazing theory, and what a terrifying huge <laughs> person there must be knocking about. <laughs> because it's not only him; it's it's his neighbours, isn't it? So his blonde neighbour, who he yeah. loves to do, he loves her. Let's be honest. Absolutely. And she's the same size as him. She lives in. She lives yeah. next door. Well, there's there's her. There's um. What's his his um. Rossiter, his cousin. Yeah. Who's the, the same? Who looks the same? Yeah. So they're obviously related, Rossiter, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the guy that his neighbour was going out with. Oh, um, we, don't, sure. we don't like him. We don't no. like Nigel Clark. No, he's, no, no. he's a bit of a weird one, isn't he? But he's, he's all togged up in a proper shirt. And he drives a car, does Nigel? Yeah. But he can still get under the sink to have a quick chat with Murray. And I don't, I just don't. <laughs> it's because the, the house is oversized. That's what it must be. Must be. So if the house is oversized, yeah. that that car, how big's the car? It's bending my mind, man. <laughs> Everything outside the house is normal size. Okay. The house is massive. So when you go in the house, you seem it's like that that um honey I shrunk the kids. You ever go oh, to yeah. Florida? The the attraction there, they've got a big chair, you can sit on a big grasshopper you can ride. Uh, I think this house is like that. But this house must be like a few hundred feet tall. Begs the question then. Who owns that house, doesn't it, really? Imagine <laughs> that as a spin-off. Well, I reckon he owns it because you'll never see him in it. Yeah, you do. Um, so I think he owns it and he has had someone buy that for him or build that for him. Oh, has he killed him off? No, yeah, no, 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 <laughs> he can't have done. He can't have done. No, no, no. If anyone's killed anyone off, Rossiter has. Yeah, because he's a little psycho, him, I'm telling you now. He is, he is. He then that little, you know, little boy demeanor doesn't do anything. I love no. how they, I love how they announce Rossiter. They always, they always announce him with such sort of disdain in, in the narrators, yeah. like cousin Rossiter. <laughs> yeah, his <laughs> boring. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's another character. There's another female character with bobbed black hair, isn't there? Who is she? There is, his yeah. friend. Um, oh. Yeah, there's two human characters and then two two Murren characters. I can't think what she's called. I don't know if it, I don't know. You know if the neighbour has a name. What if they always just call the neighbour? Well, when I was writing script for video, I was I was I watched, you know, what I could find. And then she's never mentioned it's just called Murren's next door neighbour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. Um Timothy Forder, of course, doing the narration there. Yes. Yeah. Um, a, a very glib and understated sort of delivery i wonder if it was entirely intentional to have it that flat you know what i mean yeah it does come across very different to all the jolly cartoons you normally get everything's normally quite colored and quite quite flashy and then you go to murren's murren's crack under the sink and it, it's just dismal <laughs> it really it is on purpose but it's so engaging and i i, I mean i think Part of part of what I think makes it a memorable thing, and because it's one of these things, people remember it and they'll sort of go, "I remember that from this picture," but I am a clue what it is. Yeah. Or there was a cartoon with a weird little onion guy, <laughs> and I think that whoever's ever seen it, I think they must have connected with Murren on some level because he's he has a futility that I think we can all relate to, don't you? Yeah. I've watched a few of them recently because they're the sort of thing I watch every two or three years or so, just a couple of episodes. And they always start off with, with a problem yes. that we've all had, like a spot on his nose or, you know, his eyes are too close together. <laughs> I just saw <laughs> that one of the day. <laughs> some sort of personal issue. And at the end of it, it's always, oh, well, that happens. And it's like, it's so true to life. Is it? It's all over. Mm -hmm. But the theme tune at the beginning is so jolly. Yeah. You know, the dirty, 
and it's really jolly in that. And you think, oh, it just drops you in. <laughs> Do you know, I, I just running through in my mind this this over oversized house thing. All right, it's, go on then. On, yeah. the opening, on the opening credits, like you say, it's all quite jolly. The camera pans across on the earlier episodes, specifically across the street and then into the house. All those houses must be oversized because they all, they all, he's built an estate out of it. He's got what a he up to. What is he up to? Why is it some, that? is it like a children of the stones type thing? He's building a big altar out of giant houses. It could be. It could be. Happy day, said Murren. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see it myself, can you? No, I know. <laughs> but it's a big thing from the 80s, repeated well into the 90s, of course. And yes. There's, there's not a huge amount you can say about it, apart from these theories. What is he? Where did he, where did he come from, even? You know, so, yeah. yeah. I don't know. He's. I think, I don't know if he's sort of evolved into that, because he is quite, he does seem like he's quite um, content in his own grime. Yes, like he's always searching for like a little bit of rubbish, or he's tidying things. And when he's tidying, he's just scooping up rubbish, and that's all. That's, that's <laughs> his vision. Yeah, yeah. So he must he must have devolved into that shape or into that that person. Yeah, I mean, he, like, he might have been like a Nigel Clark shaped person before. Who knows? And he's had a fall from grace or something. I think <laughs> I think essentially it is it is a show about. A, a, a depressed character. It's not a depressing show, but it's a show about a depressed character. I think, really. Yeah, very um, much. Yeah, yeah. yeah most, most definitely. And like you said, the, the the struggles that he has are so momentous at the beginning, and then they just actually that doesn't matter anymore. You know. And By the end of it, he's he's come to terms with the fact that, it, that the problem exists, and he'll absolutely. live with it. I wonder if he's still knocking about somewhere under that sink in that crack, still <laughs> doing the same stuff. Uh, oh, probably. Well, he'd be about 30 years older now, wouldn't he? 35 years yeah. older. So, I hope so. I do yeah. hope so. I'd like to, like to meet him eventually. Imagine, <laughs> that. Imagine meeting him. I wonder how big he'd actually be. I mean, it's huge. <laughs> like, a, like a big round man. Because yeah. We're not, we're not in, his, in his tiniest perspective house. That's it. I don't, it's bending my mind. I can't get my head around that now you've mentioned that. I'll never but, unsee this giant you house. You see him in the street, you see him at a restaurant, you see him other places. He's always normal size. But when he uses a phone, he's tiny. I can't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get well, it. My wife <laughs> says something, something um, that made me think as well. What if all the time you see him and he's big, he's yeah. just really near the camera? <laughs> <laughs> And that I couldn't get my head around that for, for That's a while. A, the perspective, little swine. Yeah. Yes, I can maybe, see that. Actually. Maybe doing this with the phone. Maybe it's like yeah. a massive phone. So like maybe that. it's there. Yeah. And <laughs> we're back here. Yeah. Oh my god! I need to watch it again. You should. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely should. <laughs> well, now now that we've thoroughly, uh, absolutely ruined it for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll say, Craig, thank you ever so much for joining us today um, for this quick chat about Murren Butch Stansinger. No worries. Thanks for having me. It's been lovely to thank see you. Thank you very much. And not that we need to find out because you're everywhere on the net, but tell us where we can find you just in case. Oh, if you add 80s nostalgia, that's 80s nostalgia to the end of Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, I'm on all those. Everywhere. He's everywhere. I am. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks again, Craig. Pleasure talking to you today. Thanks, Cheers. Cheers. So, all in all, it's a really memorable and self-contained little universe with many levels of subtlety for many different types of audiences. It certainly left a lingering memory, one of those vague recollections in the back of your mind, the kind of thing you'd obsess about finding on the internet but you don't know where to start and you're not sure if you maybe imagined it. And in that respect, Murren made a Murren out of us all. Bye for now. Thanks to my Patreon supporters and to everyone who supports this channel by watching, commenting and sharing. Drop a comment below on your memories of Murren and you'll get a response in the next comment reactions video. Click the left playlist for some top 5 lists about British TV shows. 
click the right playlist for some in-depth videos about 70s, 80s and 90s TV and click on my face to subscribe to this channel.